guess now's as good a time as start as any. From the skybox in the corner of the level, I am Res Mason. Good evening. Previous viewers will recognize this, the app we've been making over the past couple episodes. This is episode four. I'm going to rapid fire go through this spiel. I'm making this educational toy tool thing on the web because I made it 10 years ago and I'm interested in the projects that interested me back then. I need to remake it because the Flash version no longer runs on modern browsers. It's important that it runs quickly by just loading up a page. It's my project originally, so it's up to me to remake it. I want to program in JavaScript, or something like JavaScript, on a stream as a window into a realistic programming um, depiction, I guess. This is real programming. Um, it might not be the best programming, but it is real programming, as the bug I will get into shortly will demonstrate. We're not wizards, that's definitely true. Types of storytelling. We're starting off with me discovering and fixing a mistake from the past couple episodes, uh, but obviously these other narratives are going to interweave into the stream, and uh, Wireworld is similar, let me slow that down, Wireworld is similar to a circuit board. You can design it to route information, like electrical signals through logical pieces of circuitry and you can compose complicated systems from these simple parts and generate meaningful results like this wire world computer and the rules are very simple whatever changes are taking place in this universe called wire world they do not leave this boundary but these simple rules are just expressive enough to allow us to perform logic in these in these small pixely patterns that can be understood when you zoom it out. Okay. Enough of that. So, before we get into strategy two, so today my plan is to cover strategy two, which is, well, I'll name it when we get back into what strategy one was and stuff like that. These strategies have to do with working smarter, not harder. The rules that govern wire world apply to every pixel in this diagram at the same time. Information propagates based on rules that affect the state or color of a pixel or cell based on the previous states of that cell and its eight diagonal and orthogonal neighbors. Which means that a bit of information that's really small like this, that is maybe a hundred pixels away from this one, is going to take a hundred little steps to march along, to propagate along this bit of the pattern to get to this point. Making those steps as efficient as possible makes it easier to implement Turbo, which will tear through those rules as quickly as possible, while giving us just enough information to update the image on screen without affecting the responsiveness of the application. So all these sorts of things need to be able to coincide. 
right? There's no... Okay, there's a little bit. <laughs> At the moment, there's a little bit of slowdown when I do a whole lot of that. I don't know. I'm not going to read too deeply into that at the moment. Right, before I get into all that, there is a mistake in the, frankly, the heart of this project. So the, the current way that the engine runs is every time we want to advance a step, we give ourselves a kind of blank canvas to copy values to and the previous values in this universe go into this array called old cells. And we iterate over the old cells, but only a list of cells that we discovered when we first loaded the file aren't dead, because these dead cells never need to update. I'm not sure, hang on one second. In the naive approach, up here. Now, I, I, I won't get into that just yet. I keep getting ahead of myself. Um, even before we tried this strategy with these non-dead cells, we were looping over all of the cells that need updating. And in the case of wire cells, if you recall, oops. If you recall, a wire cell gets excited and turns into a head cell if it is touching one or two heads. And so in this part of the code, we've determined that the cell we are looking at is a wire cell. We have to count the head neighbors around that wire cell. And if there's three or more, we get out of here as quickly as possible, right? We go back into this larger loop. Otherwise, at the very end, we determine if there's one or two heads in that list of head neighbors, and if so, we change this wire to a head. It gets excited. Unfortunately, there's some stuff in here that I put in without testing. Now you might say, well, how are you gonna how are you gonna test? You just you hit the advance button. That's how you test, right? Well, that's a very ambiguous test, right? There are some assumptions that we make when we test this code against this particular wire world universe. You see how everything is a certain distance away from the edges? That margin means that this logic, where every wire looks for its eight neighbors, is always going to find eight neighbors because all of the wire pixels in this picture are more than two pixels away from the edge. But if we try a different... One moment. There it is. If we try this version, this universe, which is a demonstration of loops of clocks in various sizes, and so what we should see is these three pixels, this one, <coughs> this one, this one, and this one, will cycle like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And by cycling like that, they create these signals on this connected wire that go nowhere. It's just a demonstration. But what's unique about these symbols is that they are one cell apart. Here is a clock with one more cell in its loop. And so its electrons are two cells apart. This clock has a much larger period and these two clocks aren't working at all. Which is strange, because there is an electron head and tail in both of these loops, and we know that they should propagate, but they're not. So something is going wrong 
there is a bug in the wire world player that is causing these two electrons to fail. Not only that, but there are some code quality problems in here as well that are partially obstructing our view of the problem. So let's, let's actually read this. We have zero head neighbors. From minus one to one, inclusive, we've got an integer y offset. I am actually going to change the spelling so there's a capital O. Yeah. And then we check if y plus that offset, if the row of the cell plus or minus one is beyond the dimensions of the instance. So this row of cells ignores this uh, value of minus one for y offset because that would go off the edge of the paper, so to speak. And now in here, column offset, well, that's weird. What we really want is x offset. That doesn't, you know, that isn't a bug. That's just a, it's just strange that column offset was the value that I kept there. And then in here, we've got y offset and x offset, which is fine. But then here, we do this same code, y offset, as before, except we use height instead of width. Well, that's not the way it works. Here, we need this y to be an x. So that bug is probably what's causing this. So if I reset, refresh, and drop in clocks, and step, Nope, still a bug. Let's find out where it is. If y plus y offset, here it is. This needs to be height, and this needs to be width. And we're gonna look at that bug in just a second. Once again, advance, there we go. Now these electrons down here are properly cycling through that loop. Simple mistake. Um, The fact that this is called height and not, say, y max and zero y min. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Rows and columns, x and y, width and height, are related terms. But you don't want to use them all at the same time. It can be confusing. Most programmers use y and height and x and width uh, simultaneously. And so it makes sense to do that here. I won't do y min and y max. That's, there's really no need. <coughs> but this mistake, well, fortunately, it doesn't have any performance impact, right? This runs as fast as it did a week ago. The problem is how did we reach our milestones and solve our, you know, our, our immediate performance issues when there was a bug in the dead center of the code that runs Wireworld? Well, it just so happens that this default universe, this Owen Moore Wireworld computer, is roughly square. I mean, obviously it's not a square, but the width and the height are close enough. A and furthermore, it is wider than it is tall. And so this bug that I had in here, where we were basically um, accidentally using the wrong logic to determine whether or not to ignore a neighbor, it fortunately never kicked in here. Or I should say unfortunately, because that allowed the bug to linger. Chat's got something to say. Thanks for tuning in. I wonder if you padded the map and got rid of the bounds checks, if it would be faster. It just might. 
Um, bounce checks. I don't need to worry about padding for the Wireworld computer because it's got padding already. Something that I'm considering is, and also we, this might also speed it up. Um, you know, we are skipping the the center cell in the Wireworld cell neighborhood because that's the current cell and it shouldn't be counted, but. If it's a wire, then it doesn't hurt to count it because we just we we leave it out because it's not a head, right? So we can comment that stuff out and see how it runs. Right, one second. <laughs> um, to measure it, let total time equals zero. Let Oh wait, let total time and the denominator is called, oh, it's just the generations. Okay, total time, uh, reset, generation is zero, total time equals zero, generation plus plus, total time plus equals performance dot now minus start. The goal of total time is to const start equals performance dot now. Start is the start time of our algorithm, and we subtract that from the end time of our algorithm to get a total time. Um, that is the number of milliseconds that it takes to run this, and then we just add that to an to a to a total, right? Like this is all the time that ever went towards computing the generations. And meanwhile, we increment the generation. And this can be a fraction. So we can say window dot um, window dot uh, perf equals a function console dot log math dot now in parentheses total time over generation plus one because generation can be zero we gotta add a one down here so this number doesn't blow up uh, dot two precision is it two precision or two fixed one second mdn two fixed just a way of representing a number as a string. Two fixed is what I want. Two fixed, two, three. Okay, so this function will log the total amount of time per frame, right, per generation. Uh, and I'm attaching that to the window object so that in the JavaScript console here, here in the console, I'll be able to just do window.perf once, um, it's not a great name, window.perf. So now it's zero, which makes sense because this thing hasn't run. Um, and by the way, when I run, I'm going to have this run. I could do this in a for loop, but we lose some time to a for. What am I saying? Who cares about a for loop? For let i equals zero. i is less than um, a multiple of six because the distance between electrons is six in this universe, and we want it to kind of look nice. Sorry for the microphone pop. I'll do 120, I plus plus, advance. So it's gonna chug, which is fine. Okay. Yeah, chugging. You know what, nope, that's too slow. Not responsive enough. So I'm gonna do 30.
Okay, let's try that again. Here we go. Okay. When I say chugging, by the way, what I'm referring to is the number crunching part of the app is fighting with the user interface and rendering part of the app for computational resources. And so because it's taking, sorry, they're not fighting. It's just they add up and there's a budget. That's what I mean to say. <clears throat> Most of the animation we see on computer screens these days has a frame rate upwards of 60. We are definitely not seeing 60 frames per second of animation right now. And that is because in order to do that, we need to, uh, we need to compute the changes to Wireworld with enough interrupting time, with enough idle time left over for this thing to be drawn 60 times a second. We are nowhere near that right now. The fan's blaring on my laptop. But hopefully by the time we reach, say, there we go. So I've stopped it at 5130 and window.perf is roughly 12 milliseconds per frame. It's weird that it didn't do um, the two fixed properly. Maybe I misunderstood how two fixed works. Um, two fixed, three. Hmm, oh well. Okay, so this is with logic included, with logic excluded. So we're going to do this again after seeing. Oh, that sorry, that's that was with excluded, and this is with included. So all we're doing is we're seeing how much time goes into performing this logic where we look around the grid to find neighbors of each cell. Reset. And we hit play. And we wait for the 5,000 mark. Hopefully over those 5,000 generations, the differences between what my computer is doing at any given time uh, over those 5,000 generations gets kind of smoothed out into the average. Thirty-five hundred. Nearly there. Stop it at like 130. There we go. Okay. And then window.perf. 12.28. So based on this, what's the background music? The background music is a, is a compilation one by Copter in the bottom right. You can search for that in the Internet Archive. Actually, archive. Here we go. Oh, that's the files. Here we go. Copter Compilation 1. This is programming music that I listened to 10 years ago. And because it is in the public domain, as far as I can tell, and has been for over 10 years, I'm happy to play it in the background. So, 
Leaving out the logic shaves off a tenth of a millisecond. That's interesting. It's not the only thing we are going to experiment with today, but it's definitely interesting. Basically, we're asking a whole lot of questions, right? As we loop over a chunk of the image for every pixel on the image. But these questions have been answered countless times. So it's weird to have a nested for loop and it's weird to check these boundaries. And that's one of the ways that we can uh, change the shape of this problem to maybe optimize it. First things first though. I'm going to leave out this stuff, but this stuff goes in. Yeah. Improving variable names and fixing a boundary logic bug in the engine's wire excitation code. That sounds fancy. And push. So last week, someone asked in chat whether I would consider using a testing framework to find small problems that can be easily detected. And I said, well, no, because that doesn't make for a super interesting stream. But then, to some degree, neither does programming. The thing is, this problem that arose is kind of embarrassingly, well, it's in the core of the, it's in the core of the code that does anything interesting. I should say this, bugs happen all the time and they are not really that embarrassing. This is just the first bug that I ever live streamed and didn't notice for like three episodes. This is a bug I wrote on the stream. Is this a harbinger of the code quality moving ahead? Well, no, there will be bugs, they'll get fixed. <coughs> uh, does this mean that I should start leaning on a testing framework at the expense of the accessibility of the project? Well, no. I don't think a unit test testing framework uh, is justified for this project still because, you know, it needs to be live streamed and that doesn't make for a great stream as far as I, you know, as far as I feel. Um, just my personal opinion. This, this small file, this is a valuable test. It didn't cost me anything. You folks know what it means to drag and drop something on the stream. It's not that complex. And I should be able, what is, wait a minute. New bug old cells x plus y offset, y plus x offset. Here we go. The bug persists. So engine. Oh, it's commented out still? Hang on. That would explain it, but it shouldn't be commented out anymore. Okay, it's no longer commented out, but there is still an issue. This is fantastic. I'm gonna keep an eye on the dev, the web inspector. Step gone. Time to figure out what's happening with these electrons. Oopsie. 
engine.js. Supposedly, so reset. Oh, one second. Okay, where were we? So we need to find out why this electron is suddenly vanishing, and why this one is suddenly vanishing. So... So we have a lot of wires. So if I set a breakpoint here, this breakpoint will reach this code every time a wire reads all of its neighbors. I guess I might as well. Um, log the index x, y, and num head neighbors. Of every cell. And that's what happened. So these are all the wire cells. 200 zero zero is that one. 2100 zero zero is that one. 210, here let me kind of split screen this. There we go. So 220 has zero wire neighbors, uh, head neighbors. None of these claim to have any head neighbors, so that's a problem. I can do this though. So if if this is two zero zero, then this is four five six seven eight nine ten. So this is x of ten, and the highest y is seventeen. So this is ten seventeen. So this is ten sixteen. So we are interested in 1016. So we are going to go into the sources view and oopsie. And bring up the That's actually a little late. Up here. We've already got our x and y, and by clicking edit breakpoint on here, I can say x equals 10 and y equals 16. Enter. And so now this breakpoint will only be triggered for the logic involving this wire. So now when we click OK on reset and step, here we are, x 10 y 16 and in original cells original cells um, I think hang on 
it's a bunch of rows, right? So it should be 16, 10 is 2, which is wire. I'll double check that in cell state for uh, data.js. Yeah, wire is 0, 1, 2. And if I look in 17, it should be a 0. Aha! So this is supposed to be the last row, the 10th. Dead wire, dead wire, no heads. So the error has to be in has to be in original cells. That seems odd. Console um, original cells dot join dot to string just prints out all of the original cell values, although dot join comma. So these are all the values that we should expect. So here's another weird trick. We can get rid of every comma. So we just have this, and we can change every three, which remember means a dead cell, and replace it with a space, and replace every two with a dot, which in this case kind of resembles a wire. And now if we just mess with the width of this program, it should resemble, oh, but it really doesn't, does it? wonder why that didn't work. Oh, it's because of white space. Okay, sorry, one second. There it is. This is our pattern. And the fact that there's a one down here. So wait a minute, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, 18. I miscounted somewhere. So instead, we want this at a breakpoint to be y is 17. And we'll rerun. Drop in that MCL. Hit advance. Right, 1017, and then original cells 18, should be a bunch of threes and a single one, there it is, in index 10, where we expect it. And then we're going to do, okay, so 10 is 1, good. Old state. I mean old cells. Old cells. One. Good. So there is a head waiting to be counted in this code. We switch over the old state. It's a wire. We start looking at... y plus y offset is 16, x plus 
x offset is 9. That makes sense. So that's the topmost row. And then it tries the middle row. So now console.log x plus x offset y plus y offset 917. I'm just going to place a breakpoint here to speed things up. No, that was too high up. Let's try that again. <laughs> Reset. Advance. And also, I will borrow this condition. So now we are at 1017. Y offset minus one, X offset zero. Here, I'm also just gonna hit all of these continues breaks ten seventeen Y offset zero. We're not really interested in Y offset zero. That is the home cell, so that's fine. Um, y offset zero still. And then ten seventeen Y offset one. Good. Okay. Old cells. Old cells. Ten. Or sorry, seventeen. Ten. Old cells. Eighteen. Ten. Is a one. Oh, a one. Well, a one. Oh, for Pete's sake. These are electron tails, that's why. That's weird. I'm gonna take a look at that file. Oh, right. <laughs> this is a format called NCL. This file was made by Ian Woolard in March 1990. Line, 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 line. So this is dead. I forget what the dollar sign does. I think dollar sign means end of line. Looks about right.
I have no idea what symbol that is. Here, next step. Okay, so there's a supposed to be head, and I thought they were tail. Does the original file indicate anything about... So A is supposed to be head. But here... Oh boy. <laughs> okay, let's try this. Clocks. The, these ones went up this way, and in mine, I did it again. Clocks. Oh, I hit a breakpoint, that's why. <laughs> Time to get rid of all these breakpoints. Clocks MCL. Mine are traveling in the opposite direction. In other words, I mixed up, since before this stream, I mixed up the head and tail cell states in MCL files. So if I go into parser, parse.js, A is tail, B is head. Let's try that. This is an important lesson. So, there we go. Now they're going in the same direction as they were in Gali. They're going counterclockwise. So, in some ways, this file as a test for whether my Wireworld player is working properly has some issues, right? Because it was able to demonstrate a a boundary logic problem this you know at the start of this stream, but it was not able to shed any it was not able to indicate that the interpretation of heads and tails in these MCL files was mixed up because you can go clockwise or counterclockwise around any of these. Whereas this flip flop which now works, fortunately. Hooray. This flip flop is not just a bunch of clocks, a bunch of cyclical patterns. It starts with an incomplete electron just the head, in a sort of dead end, and propagates out, making it a better test for this particular thing. More interestingly, I've chosen head and tail colors that are very close to each other. So if I want to... I mean, I probably won't have this problem again, but if I want to make this clearer, I should go into GUI.js, I think. Here we go. These are my colors for the cells. And I wonder what these commented out ones are. So I'll comment out the ones that we were just using, and I'll comment in the ones that were there a second ago. Oh, these are the classic ones. These are the colors that I used 10 years ago. And I like it, but I think I'll come up with another set. So... Actually, I think what I should do, because 
these things should be indistinguishable no matter what. It's not reasonable for these colors to be so close together. So I will choose a darker tail color. There we go. And so now when I load Flip Flop MCL, it's a lot easier to see, I don't know, is it? Let me bring the bug, the bug back real quick and see if I can actually tell it apart. I can't. This color scheme is not a good one. Okay, so in that case, head color, I will make... much brighter, like that. And tail color... See what that looks like. Mm. So classically, blue is head and white is tail. So I'm already conflating these. Ah, here's an idea. Tail can be a slightly brighter wire and we won't have trouble telling them apart. because wire is everywhere. Brighter. Um, there we go. Let me, uh... <laughs> Let me take these engine changes that we were using to measure the... Okay, I'm just gonna... Fixing a parsing... Okay, parsing mistake. MCL parsing was confusing electron heads and tails. Changed the color palette to make tails more easily distinguishable from heads. And then these engine changes I'm just going to stash, which is a way... Okay, so um, performance... Uh, measurement technique. No, just performance measurement. There we go. So anytime I want to use the same trick as I did earlier to measure the amount of time it takes to evolve these things, I can just apply this stash and it'll it'll add this stuff, make these changes to the code. Okay. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I think. Oh no, no I'm not. Okay.
You know what? For better, forget for now about the color choices. I will use the classic palette. Check with chat. Oh, hey chat. Would it be reasonable for that performance measurement scheme to be a feature toggle? Uh, I could include, so the, in this stash, these changes that allow me to measure performance, these are present in every modern browser. I could put them behind a flag so that I wouldn't have to, you know, apply and remove this code every time I wanted to measure performance. The question is, do I want that to be a part of the deliverable? At the moment, I'm not feeling it, only because it's a very clumsy technique, right? It actually, the application takes a pretty significant hit in responsiveness. But I do think there should be, you know, I should be writing these things down. One second. To do? There is a to do. Um, that's done. Right. So the first is uh, make it easy to benchmark different techniques and you know, one of the features of the original Wireworld Player project was that visitors to the site would be able to select which strategy of computing the Wireworld simulation to apply. And I do want to bring that back. So make it easy to use different computing, uh, computing strategies. There was something else. Um, what was it? I don't know, but I'm losing time and it's a live feed, so I'm just going to plow ahead do yep um, yeah that's fine and I will amend the previous commit yeah now then right let's finally get into these strategies again so you may recall the naive, what was this, 27 versus 15 milliseconds per unit I forgot to name, I don't know. Oh no, it's actually milliseconds average generation compute time, that's what it is. Okay, so I can just do 20 milliseconds. Um, it's a period, median period, no, median frame compute time, what's it called? There's a better word for this, but I will know what this means. So I'll just use that. Okay. So last episode, we came up with a way of changing the data that, let me just close a bunch of this. We came up with a way to change the data that we computed, that we operated on so that we could 
avoid needlessly iterating over these huge um, empty parts of the image, which make up, I think, more than half of all the cells. But we also, at the end of the last episode, discovered that 50,000 of the remaining... So, of the remaining cells, the ones that actually have a non-dead state, 50,000 of them are... Maybe 55,000 of them are wire. And about 5,000 are electron head, and about 5,000 are electron tail. Which means that we are still iterating, we are still looping over roughly 50,000 wire cells that currently have no neighbors. Roughly 80% of all cells that are looped over do not need to be looped over. They're nowhere near an electron. So here's what we're gonna do. Strategy two is going to be deluxe cells with fields. That's a terrible name for it. We're gonna store more on each cell. So we are going to um, give a neighbor list neighbor list per cell so every cell is going to have a list of indices of neighbors so we'll never have to boundary check again so that's the first thing we'll do so for instance this cell isn't going to iterate over all eight, or sorry, all nine cells in its neighborhood. It's going to iterate over a list of this cell and this cell, because those are the non-dead cells that are within its neighborhood. Those are the only cells that could become something other than wire. So that's where we're going to start with that neighbor list per cell. And then once we have that list of neighbors, we should be able to do what I would call forward. What would I call this? Reach forward from heads to wires. In other words, instead of every wire checking to see if it has a head neighbor, we're going to have every head increment one to a wire uh, to a counter. So we're going to call it um, head count per cell and electron heads increment wire neighbors head counts and then so there's a phase where we iterate over every right so How do we do this? We don't want to we don't want to iterate over every non-dead cell. So we're going to say for every tail become a wire, right? So every tail in the list of tails, and then for every head in the list of heads, for every wire neighbor. increment that neighbor's head count aka the number of heads um, adjacent to that neighbor the number of heads that have touched that neighbor 
in this frame. Um, and to avoid having to clear it. Hi, Felbar. Thanks for tuning in. We're coming up with a strategy to optimize this thing. This pixely megastructure that solves for primes, as it so happens. Right. So as I was saying, we'll have a neighbor list per cell, and we'll also have a head count per cell. And so we're going to say cells get fields. Neighbor list, head count, um, state, obviously. Cells are objects with fields. Neighbor list, head count, state. Um, but also um, head count generation. So what does this mean? We are going to count generation no cells are objects with fields okay um, maintain a list of tails maintain a list of heads so that we can iterate over them I don't know why I'm using text edit for this one. I guess to keep the font size different. Project's coming along nicely. Um, thanks for asking. Found a bunch of bugs and fixed them. Now we're trying to see how fast we can make this JavaScript logic in the engine. Or here we are in the engine. Right now the bottleneck, like the efficiency of this thing, is more or less um, the number of cells in the picture. What we kind of want to do instead is make it perform uh, based on the number of heads in the picture, which are these yellow dots. So if we can just constrain our number crunching to the neighborhoods around electron heads, then we should be good to go. Right, so again, our big old loop is going to end up in the heads. For every head in the list of heads, for every wire neighbor, increment that neighbor's head count. And we're going to say include that neighbor in the list of wires that might change. So that basically causes the electron heads to pepper the wires around them with numbers but it's also going to mark them as a wire that might have changed. You know what? Do I want to maintain a list of, well, I already have a list of, uh, okay, maintain a list of all cells and then head count also gets generation next to it. And the whole point of generation is we can use that. Do we really want to call it generation? We'll call it March. That's a bad name too. 
this value on cell is going to be our way of knowing for sure that the, oh yeah, it has to be generation, so that we can know for sure that the last time that its head count was changed And then I could iterate over the list of all cells looking for the generation that is equal to the current generation. World date. I like the sound of that. There is a... a... There's an existing lingo that I think by using generation I can form to it, which would be a good thing. So instead of include that neighbor in the list of wires, we will um, if the neighbor's generation isn't equal to the current generation, then neighbor.generation equals generation and neighbor.headcount equals zero. And then we do neighbor.headcount plus plus. This is slowly turning into JavaScript, which is fine. Neighbor dot generation not equal to generation there we go so how is this different from strategy one we aren't touching every single cell wait yes we are <laughs> I didn't finish this Geez, Louise. Okay, so for every cell, if cell dot generation is equal to generation, uh, and cell dot head count is less than three. I'll do less than or, less than or equal to two. Now the er, less than three is fine. What's nice about this is we know that a neighbor, sorry, a cell with a generation equal to the current generation, isn't going to have a head count of zero. Why would it? We zero it, but then we immediately increment it. So they're always going to be less than three. Sorry, they're always going to be greater than zero. The only question is whether they're less than three. So if... Right. And then what we do is we say cell.state equals head. Cell state dot head. So hopefully this gets us away from iterating over fifty thousand wire cells with a large loop. Let's see what we can do. Okay. Strategy one, we're now going to do strategy two. So up here we have non-dead cells. We're also gonna have wire cells, head cells. Oh, by the way, what is the difference between the list of not wire cells, tail cells. 
The only difference between the list of tails and heads, like all of the heads become tails and all of the tails become wires. So just like we switch the old cells and new cells when we advance currently, we can switch the tail cells and head cells. And we don't have to reassign every head to a tail. I mean, we do. We need to change the state. Anyway, let's figure this out. Tail cells, head cells. Data, original cells, and the render function takes our render function is outside the engine. What is this? Make event target. <laughs> Something tells me this is a non-standard piece of terminology I introduced at some point. Make event target. Sorry, folks. Give me just a second. GUI utils. Slider. Right. Make event target. We return a new event target. Oh. That shouldn't have been in there. <laughs> okay, no more excrement as far as I know in the source code. Make event target is in use in a few places to create an event target object, which in some browsers is its own class that you can construct, but in every browser can be constructed by creating a document fragment, which is a much heavier class, a heavier object than event target. Let me just... Unbelievable. You know what? Annotate. Okay, that won't show it. I'm curious when that got introduced. March. Apparently, lots of recent browsers don't support the event target constructor. Adding a shim and removing an overlooked console log. I should just, yeah, I should try this code before, okay. And then in GUI utils, oh, it's still there. Oh, right, because I, okay. GUI utils, try. Reset, try. Safari is fine with it. Event target constructor, can I use? How recent are these? May of this year. Um, 79, well that's edge. 
I don't know. I'll leave it in just in case. Um, remove errant profanity. Nope. Remove errant. Localhost runs fine, no errors. Might as well, right? Go through the motions. Localhost. Great. Where were we? Here. Update paper. Cells. We're iterating over non-dead cells. Okay. So our strategy is going to replace some of the data that we render as well, which is fine. Because basically, if you think about it, from one generation to the next, what parts of this image actually update? You could say, well, the heads, the tails, and some of the wires. But actually, if you make this image two layers, where the bottom layer is dead cells, and every non-dead cell is a wire, then you can just have a top layer that is completely transparent except that it um, draws heads and tails. So it can be a two-layer thing. Let me think, If is that more, is that faster than drawing, it is faster than drawing every wire. Yes, that's good. So that's what we're going to do. So the render function is always is, is also going to take not just non-dead cells, but um, yeah, we're going to start using the layers un under here. So in index HTML, we've got base and we've got tail and we've got head. We're going to start using these canvases. So, right, I should add this to the strategy. Um, render. Only draw dead and wire cells once to the base layer. Draw the... I don't know. Here's the cool thing about having a base layer, a tail layer, and a head layer. Just like, I mean, we know that every head becomes a tail. So arguably, we could just update one of these and swap the other. So tail, the tail canvas would just be the old head canvas. We could do that. But that only works if the two generations that we are drawing are consecutive. In other words, um, if we are at generation zero and we advance to generation one, then we can reuse the positions, like the pixel data, for the heads in the tails. As I'm saying this out loud, I feel like it's a bit too much of a risk to over-engineer that, so we're gonna call these... Yeah, we're gonna just use base and... I'm gonna call this live. Nope, active. Is that a loaded term in web development? 
One second. This is fine. If active is loaded, then base is probably loaded too. So, in GUI, we are going to have a width, a height. Cells are used in... Okay. Yes, yeah, cells is fine. No, you know what? Let's start with this. Okay. So, I've reverted engine. No changes to engine.js. We are just going to start by updating the GUI to do two layers of stuff. So, initialize paper is where we can draw the first, the base of things. So, here we go. Labels, gen okay, so then here, for every row, y the height, for every column, x to width, state is cells yx is equal to cell state dead then dead, otherwise wire. Color is that state, pixel index is that color. So this will draw the base. I just need cells, don't I? So cells comes from data. So width, height, cells. Comment this out for now. And for each non dead cell, we're going to quickly grab the state. If state isn't cell state dot head and state isn't cell state dot tail continue nope I do need that yx so these do go up top index x y state is cells x uh, cells y x and then okay let's give this a shot let's get rid of these stupid breakpoints that looks awful what's going on here okay so first of all remember that these cells are populated from a file and they are in sparse arrays and so we don't have every dead cell listed. So what we're going to do is we are going to start by filling um, Okay, I want to fill the canvas. MDN context 2D. No, I don't want to fill the canvas. I want to fill this pixel buffer. Okay. So, populate with values. It's a typed array. Constructor, buffer,
so okay. <laughs> buffer is new. Array buffer num bytes. Flash background, the drawing API, the canvas API um, in the web stack is sometimes excruciatingly pointlessly verbose. Um, numbytes, right, I create, okay, so then these are just views into the buffer. Why am I creating a new view every frame? Hang on. So... Every element in the uint32 array is a uint32 where the first byte is red, the second byte is green, the third byte is blue, and the fourth byte is alpha. Or the opposite. And here, we take the same data and we call it a uint a clamped... Okay, so const pixel bytes equals... sense in creating a new one of those every single time we render, although it's a pretty small object. This is a view into this array buffer. We're not actually, you know, allocating a huge chunk of memory. And then in here, pixels, pixel bytes. So we use pixels to set Color, and we use pixel bytes to appease context 2D. Okay. So, does array buffer have a method that would allow me to easily fill it? Array buffer fill. Probably not. Data view is not a typed array, so I want typed array. Here they all are. Length, typed array. This is what I wanted. Start index defaults to zero, end index defaults to length. Perfect. So, my guess is array buffer filled 
doesn't have fill. Yeah, no fill on there, but it is on there. So pixels.fill um, states to colors dot get cell state dot dead. So now the background color should be black. Cool. All right. So grab that. Drawings dot base dot pixels dot fill. Now we've got an issue with this logic. State is, is it dead, and dead, otherwise wire. So, Actually, what we want is this. If it's if it's dead or null, then we want it to be dead. Otherwise, we want it to be wire. Let's do this. Cells null to cell state dot dead is dead, then dead, otherwise wire. There we go. <laughs> and then reset advance. Yeah, it's just drawing the electrons onto the base pixels, which we want to be instead active dot pixels and we want that fill at least for now active pixels fill with zero in other words transparent There we are. And we're going to call update paper in engine as soon as it resets. Render and then non dead cells. So now we don't need this anymore. So, what all did we just change? Well, we have added a canvas called active to hang out with the base canvas. The engine now passes non-dead cells to the first render call, which it probably should have been doing in the past, I don't know. Um, and then the GUI now initializes, in initialize paper, it uses that cells property in the data, and, well, it also adds a pixel bytes object to each 
canvas, like, paper layer um, to avoid having to create a new UA, U and date clamped array at the end of the render. <clears throat> Let's see. We are initializing the drawing of the uh, with, with by drawing the entire base. So every dead cell is drawn. Well, all cells are. Dr <laughs> How do I? The canvas is is the color of dead cells. But then any cell that could be a wire is drawn as a wire making this background image, which actually we can toggle on and off like this. Um, so there's the image, and we can find the, in the drag region, in the paper, we've got the base and the active, and with the base selected, or rather, with the active selected, we can toggle to visibility, so now it's hidden. Toggle visibility, now it's shown. Um, active can get its style changed. Here we go. Position absolute, so left 5px. Top 5px. So there, we can kind of see there is. <laughs> that looks kind of cool, doesn't it? There's this. Um, there's this distance between the canvases. That looks more substantial the large, the farther you zoom out, but that kind of makes sense. It's a neat effect. Anyway, so that is how we are now drawing things. And that also means that aside from this fill, we only have to iterate over the let me make sure this is still performant. We iterate over all the non-dead cells. And we no longer need the or dead. We get the state, and if it's head or tail, then we get its color, we get its pixel index, and we set the color to the pixel index. I'm also going to get rid of this for each because it might speed it up a little bit. I'm going to say. Drawings dot base. Uh, no, just active. And then drawings dot active dot context put this. Okay. Const drawing equals drawings dot active. It's the only one we're interested in. And I will rename it active drawing. And I will put it, yeah, that's where it goes. And then drawings active becomes active drawing. And then active drawing pixel bytes, active drawing image data. And that gets me away from this for each. Oh. So then down 
here. Const base drawing equals drawings.base. Active drawing. There we go. Does put image data really need that zero zero? Whatever, I'll, I'll leave it in. And then reset, there we go. Cool. Oh right, I just remembered the other thing to do in the to-do. Um, at some point, um, detect uh, intense flickering and um, replace with the um, epilepsy guard color. So one of the cool things about this project is we can measure how often a cell in the simulation updates. Some of them update extremely quickly. Um, these ones are updating all the time. And I really do think that they could pose an epilepsy uh, threat to people who are using the app. So, um, I wanna, at some point, not, not today, uh, we got an hour left, we're not gonna be doing this. Hopefully we'll complete strategy two, but we might not. Um, I wanna detect intense flickering and replace that color with what I'll call an epilepsy guard color, which basically just means this is a cell that is either wire, head, or tail, and has been changing a lot recently. Um, and basically, once the uh, once the flickering stops, the color goes back to reflecting the actual color of the cell. That shouldn't be too difficult by making every cell an object. Um, so this would be called like. Um, flicker status, but that comes that comes later. So cells are objects with fields. You know what, first I will commit and upload this. So active base canvas is drawn to only once new active canvas is updated well is cleared and then set pixel by pixel for each non-dead cell that's what we've done so far push Okay, so this render is no longer part of that strategy. Um, I don't think I have individual stats from Firefox last time on how quickly it renders, but we should be able to test the performance like so. stop and stop and flame chart it doesn't seem all that different to be honest although I'm comparing it to hang on call tree Update paper, whoopsie, performance, update paper um, for the whole thing, 
12%. I really gotta keep track of this stuff. I have no idea if that's better or worse. Um, what I might do is during a later stream, I might try to perform some metrics across the strategies that we come up with. Um, but seriously, we gotta we gotta do some more programming of the engine. So back to the strategy. Cells are now going to be objects with fields. For now, we can start with just an object that has a state property. By doing that, we can, f we can then run the app and find all the places where this breaks. Um, then we can do headcount, generation, and neighbor list. I think neighbor list first. Yeah. Um, you know what, I'm going to break strategy 2 down into 2 and 3. So the generation and, uh, and headcount uh, are later. And... That's later. Advance. We'll just iterate over neighbors instead of adjacent cells. There we go. Reducing the scope of strategy two. So down here, new cell fields. Okay. Let's do it. Every cell now is going to be an object with state. So, old cells, new cells, original cells, here we go. So right now we have original cells equals data dot cells dot map row. So for every row in the data cells, we fill it so that it has the right width and then we fill that row with cell state dead so instead we're going to make this um, state colon cell state dead nope um, fill null dot map state cell state dead there we go I'm gonna oh you know what I should be running prettier my bad one second um, the current changes I will just quickly stash and I'll run prettier Let's see what it's cooked up. GUI. What changes to GUI? Oh, it wants it to be nice and long, that line. Okay. If you insist, I'm not going to be bent out of shape over that. Okay. So now, data.cells.map. Broken cat. Wait a second. Cell state dot dead. All right, undoing this. <laughs> Is this bad code? It's definitely harder to maintain than it should be. So this concatenates the row with dead. Good. And then dot map state. Here we go. 
state. So this replaces every state in that array with an object with the property state. That's good. And then we need to start adding property lookup, which has some overhead, definitely. So we're going to find out how bad this change affects. Basically, we're going to be comparing the impact of this change, of replacing all these things with um, an object. Uh, we're going to compare the cost of doing that with the benefit of maintaining a list of neighbors for each state. Uh, sorry, for each cell. Um, so, I also need to go into reset. Here we go. So, Instead of row.slice, this has to be row.map, cell. Um, quickest way to clone something, MD, uh, clone JavaScript object. Quickest way. Not going to go to W3Docs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, original cells. Oh, you know what? Original cell states. Okay. So then this is no longer necessary. And original cell states. dot map row cell and then in here oof. so state oh dot map state to state okay so now all the old cells and all the new cells are now objects with state. Fantastic. Um, and then advance old state, we do dot state. And then new cells dot state. We just find all these dot state, old state. Then cell state dot state equals cell state head. Let's see if this works. Something's wrong. Oh, right, the rendering's wrong, which is fine. But no complaints in the console. So now let's go into GUI.js. States to colors. State, cells yx, I should rename this to original cell states. Update paper cells cells dot state. That should do it, but then of course we need to rename this data.
think about this. Initialize paper gets data from parse file and parse has cells. So I'm going to rename cells in parse to cell states. And honestly, I'm going to make parse guarantee the dimensions of all of those cell states. I'll do that next though, I'll do that next. And then engine cells data dot cell states. Like this logic to do move into parser, let's be honest. No reason that's a need that should be in the engine. Cells, cells. I think this is good. And then this becomes cell states. Let's try that. Looks good. It is definitely slower. You can tell that it's a slower system right now and we're going to measure how slow it is because basically we just went from looking up an integer in an array or an array of arrays we went from that to looking up an object in an array of arrays and then getting a field off that object So, strategy two, cells are objects with fields. Um, we should say here, um, cost, property, name, lookup. And we can measure it. So I'm going to take these changes and put them up there. And then Put in performance measurement. Might have to do it all by myself. Okay, so this will take a little while, but we are going to run this until the generation counter down here says 5130 or so, and we are going to count the, we're going to measure the total milliseconds per frame.
and see just how bad we made things. I should say, um, there are ways of representing things like objects with fields that do not rely on JavaScript objects, and that can be a kind of optimization down the, li uh, down the line. But tonight, these are going to stay JavaScript objects. A fifth of the way there. This might be a good time for me to try and resplain how JavaScript objects differ from C structs. Um, ideally, the memory used in this application would treat all of the data that we want to store on something like a cell. <laughs> I can't even I can't even zoom in right now. There we go. Um, all the data that we want to store on a cell would ideally just be some number of bytes that are adjacent to each other, that are like next to each other in memory, right? This array of arrays of cell states should just be a big old buffer and its dimension, its size in memory is width times height times footprint of a cell. And each cell just would have its state and then its um, whatever other traits it has, its list of neighbors, um, populating the memory in its footprint. That is not the way that JavaScript does things. It's not the way that a lot of dynamic languages do things. Um, JavaScript does not have a type system, and so you can't straight up specify what a cell is and that it has a footprint in the first place. As far as JavaScript knows, every single cell could be a dictionary of just arbitrary fields. And because JavaScript cannot optimize that away, I mean, to some degree it tries. That's why it's still kind of fast. Or palatably fast. And so there's a lot under the hood that makes JavaScript still perform fairly well despite that uh, that architectural uh, basis but we can circumvent that by choosing a representation of this data that is not a JavaScript object and hopefully at some point we can um, we can use some of the web stack that is that does is not you know is not uh, constrained to that limitation at all uh, to represent objects in a different way forty seven forty is there anyone in chat who would like to take a guess as to what the performance is of this uh, this implementation. There we go, paused. Okay. Thirty four. So we can compare that down here. So strategy one with boundary check excluded and included. Strategy one with um, boundary check included and cells are objects. It is more than twice as slow. It takes more than twice as long, I should say, to do this work. So that's the cost. We should say cost property name lookup instead of 
simple indexing plus 200 uh, more than 200 percent uh, slow down I should say takes almost twice the time to compute almost three times okay hang on 34 over 12 ah you're right <laughs> thrice thrice so let's see whether we can uh, make up for that by storing a list of neighbors on these things and iterating over the list of neighbors when we have a wire <laughs> this also might be the night where I do a bunch of code, but I don't push it to master. Um, a neighbor is a pair of coordinates. Uh, because we can take the x and y coordinates of every cell um, and the width of the universe to create an integer index, uh, a neighbor would just be a single index that we would um, turn into an X and a Y. Although we don't have to do that. Hmm. We could store the X and Y. Here's the thing though. What's nice about having the cells be these objects, these nodes in a graph, is as long as they have a list of neighbors, there is no necessary um, concept of X and Y. The only question is, can we do that sort of optimization without incurring the cost that we just did? And um, at least for tonight, overcoming that cost with a benefit. So, uh, original cell states. Um, right, so in here, we're gonna say state and then neighbors, empty array. It might be faster to have a single index because it's probably faster to redo the computation than look up the extra memory. Yeah, I don't know what the trade-off is. I know that we've got the single index for now, and that's where we're, what we're going to stick with, because programmers don't do what they don't have to, myself included. Um, so now we have a neighbor's object, uh, a neighbor's array on each cell, um, and... No, you know what? I don't like this. We need to make this a little smarter. So here's what we're going to do. Const cell neighbors equals original cell states dot map anything to empty array. We are going to create an array of arrays that correspond to these cells. So they can do this. Um, let's see. Yeah. Forget this, we're going to do cell neighbors. Okay, for let y equals zero, y is less than height y plus plus. We've already got this somewhere. Good. Um, hum.
this doesn't have to be in reset, does it? Oh. No, this is in initialize. And then this, okay. Before we do the neighbors, I'm going to fix this first. Because basically, the state objects in old cells and the state objects in new cells. Uh, oh, for Pete's sake, hang on. Old cells just becomes cells. Okay. We don't have to do the swap here. Because state is also going to have an old state. Okay, we're getting somewhere. So, every cell will store I gotta think this through so we no longer swap those arrays we do old state equals state. Okay, here's how that works. We're already incurring this cost down here, so it's, it'll have the same runtime asymptotically. Um, we're gonna say non dead cells i dot old state equals num dead cells i dot state. So that's how we copy the old state from the new state. There is a way to avoid this by having one be called like the back state and the other one called the front state and we would alternate between them based on I'll leave that out for now because that would make the property lookup on state kind of weird. This is fine for now. Old state is state, and then old state equals old cells dot old state. Uh, instead of old cells, it's just cells yx. Um, gross. Undo, 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 undo. Getting ahead of ourselves. This still works, right? <laughs> yeah, slowly, but surely. Reload. Let's rethink this. It no longer makes sense for the cells to be stored in a 2D array. Original cell states can be that way. That's fine. But cells should not be stored in a 2D array. is fine. Cells uh, 
This is where we first get the index. So const index equals that, and then cells index. So cells will be a sparse array. We'll just look up into it. Do I want that? No, no I don't. Index is still based on X and Y and makes the sparse array unnecessarily large. So, here's what I'll do. Cells dot push Here, const cells by index equals new map. Cells by index. Let UID equals zero. Dot set index a new cell state will be original cell states. Here we go. So this is where we're finally going to be making states. Cells by index dot set state index UID and then down here UID plus plus. So now every cell will have its own unique ID called ID. And that. Yes, we do. Okay. Cells by index allows us to quickly turn spatial coordinates into a single lookup into a map. So that's still useful. Um, so our object, our state, will be, sorry, our, our cell will be an index, an ID, a state, and uh, original state will be that, and then there we go. And then const original state equals the state. For the moment, ID is only a value that is completely unique. Like I know that index is kind of, the point of ID is eventually we're going to pack these cells into an array. Oh, you know what? We all we already are. Const um, here. So cells equals empty array. Um, okay, so I shouldn't call this index. I'm gonna call this x y y times width plus x. And this ID actually should be called index. And so this cells by index should be cells by XY. Let index equal zero. Cells is okay. Index. And then index. Let me look for index down here. Cool. Okay. 
So this index here, con, oops, const cell equals that cells dot push cell. Yeah, cells index equals cell. Cells equals new array um, non-dead cells in length. Oh wait, no, we don't have that yet. <laughs> Here, cells is empty for now, but we're populating cells x y uh, cells by x y with the cells. So each cell is one of those. I can pop this back in. And then down here, um, cells equals new array, non-dead cells dot length. And then for let i equals zero, i is less than non-dead cells. And here, non-dead cells are not going to be used elsewhere anymore either. So right now they're used elsewhere, but Okay. Const non-dead cells. Do I need that? No, I don't. Index. I is less than index. I plus plus. Okay. So now we're creating a map of cells by their x, y, and then const cell equals I'll just leave this empty like this and then reset can do that stuff. Index original state, xy index original state. Okay. Const cell equals cells by xy. Oops. Const xy's. Non dead cell xy's equals empty, and then non dead cell xy's dot push xy. Okay, and then instead of this, we're going to iterate for let i equals zero, i is less than non-dead cell coordinates i plus plus I'm not liking this either it's really easy to lose the plot here so original cell states. Instead of checking which ones are dead, I'll do this instead. Um, clear this. <laughs> Again. Okay. So what I want is const cell grid. There we go. Equals original cell states dot map 
row row dot map fair enough lava have a good night thanks for uh, tuning in row row dot map um, state state so this gives us the cell grid and what else row comma y state comma x x y state so now we have a grid of cells that have their x their y and their state so now we have enough information okay to create a original cell states row dot map and so this is state is cell state dot dead null otherwise right so this doesn't make a sparse array but it's kind of sparse it's going to be a big old 2d array let's see original cell states also don't need this anymore okay cell grid equals array height dot fill nothing dot map array width This gives us the y dot fill null dot map value x. And so now we can create our state object. Original cell states. Oh, well, we don't know if we want to yet. So, we've got an x and a y. Const state equals I've completely forgotten what the field is called on data. Engine data.cell states. Data.cell states Y, X. If state null cell state dot dead, which should be moved to the uh, to the parser. If if state or cell state dot dead is equal to cell state dot dead, no, is not equal. To cell state dot dead. Then we actually have a state here. So uh, return. Oh, you know what? I'll do the opposite. If we don't have, if the thing is dead, then we're not going to make a state. Return null. Otherwise, return state. Um, let's change this to original state. Return x y original state. There we go. So this creates a sparse, uh, creates a grid of cells or null. And then cells here. Let's see. Uh, 
const cell equals xy original state id nope index index let index equals zero index plus plus return cell there we are cells.push cell. So now we have, this might be better. So now we have an array of cells, but we need to populate their neighbors. So now we're gonna create a four, let i equals zero, i is less than index i plus plus. I'm gonna rename index to num cells, but it'll be called index on the cell. Cool. Const cell equals cells i. Then we're going to do our boundary check in there. But instead of num head neighbors, it will be num neighbors. Let num neighbors equal zero. No, it's not. Just boom. Okay. Neighbor counting. Neighbor listing. I'm just called find neighbors. Find neighbors. Meet. Meet neighbors. Great. Boundary check. That's fine. Boundary check. And then in here, we're just going to do uh, cell.neighbors.push. Cell grid. One second. Const y equals cell y x const neighbor equals cell grid y x but it's y plus y offset x plus x offset if neighbor isn't null push neighbor. Okay, finally, this means that now every cell has its position, its index in the cells list, which is unique. It has an original state and it has a list of neighbors that never changes. Great. And then in reset, all we need is for let i equals zero, i is less than, no, you know what, I'll do this. Um, cells dot for each cell, cell dot state equals cell dot original state. That's all that it needs. 
And then up here, old state is state. Uh, no, that's not all it needs, is it? Because this needs to be old state. I might be messing up with the old state and new state thing. Give me one second. We make our list of neighbors. Um, this is completely unnecessary. Reset. Cell.state is original state. old state is original state. This is fine, but then up here, non cells. Um, we already know that num cells. Num cells is zero. Cool. Num cells. I is zero for every cell. We no longer need this. We will need this, though. We'll need to record um, cells i dot old state equals cells i dot state. So we copy the old state like that. And then for every cell, Which, oh, const cell equals cells i switch cell dot old state. If it's a tail, then cell dot state is wire. If it's a head, state is tail. If it's a wire, then this for let j equals zero, j is less than num cells, j plus plus, nope, not num cells, um, meet neighbors, and then just as we have a list of neighbors, we can also do num neighbors on the cell. So down here, cell.num neighbors equals cell.neighbors dot length. So then for okay, so then const num neighbors equals cell dot num neighbors. J is less than num neighbors. Um, if cell dot neighbors J 
j dot old state is cell state dot head num head neighbors plus plus if num head neighbors now you know what that optimization of um, terminating early I will avoid that because most of the cells do not have that circumstance I don't think here I'll just comment it out if num head neighbors is equal to three break hell I'll leave it in and then we can time it although we are running out of time aren't we okay let's see if first of all let's see if this runs couldn't find new cells new cells so just cells cells okay cool non dead cells dot length non dead cells okay so now we can get rid of non dead cells Num cells equals cells dot length. So for each cell, if cells i dot state is equal to cell state, let's try this again. const state equals cells i dot state. If state is equal to cell state dot wire, we continue. We get the color. There we go. So now update paper should be a lot shorter. Can't find variable y. Oh, here we go. Cell dot y, cell dot x. Cell equals cells I. Well, we got some of them. I wonder what's happening. This is not where I would like to end the evening. Based on the old state, we choose a new state. Um, old state is state. If its tail it becomes wire, if its head it becomes tail. Else cell dot state equals cell state dot wire. Probably not necessary and probably not the culprit. Yeah, leave that out. No need for that. Advance. Return. So the problem is occurring. Here's what I'll do. Console.log cells. bunch of objects. Another downside of uh, original state zero. Neighbors state zero. Why zero? Okay. 
um, data.js cell state zero is head and there's tail wire and dead okay so show 100 more here's what I'll do real quick cells dot map cell cell dot state cell dot num neighbors something's not right let me clear this and load a simpler file five name uh, five cells <laughs> one two three four five that's why so in engine um, creating a cell let's see y x console.log cell grid dot map row row dot ma uh, dot map cell cell dot original state dot join space dot join new line so let's see all oh, right original state no that that should have worked um, cell is equal to null then empty otherwise console log cell grid map row row dot map cell Try this first. Log cell grid is an array of arrays of nulls, which is fine, but then at some point we should see some things that aren't null. There where they are. going to rewrite this as a classic for loop as well. Array, height, that's fine, for let y equals zero, y is less than height, y plus plus, const row equals ray cell grid y equals row data cell states
that's where I chop it off. Okay, so no cells. So we're going to keep the cell grid sparse. And then... Array height, fill null. I wonder if I just leave this one out, what happens? Cool, no error. And then array width. Yeah, that's fine. And then we're gonna do data.cellstates.map row y. Sorry, for each. for each cell X. If cell is null, return. Otherwise, oh, if cell is null, whoops, that's cell state. If cell state is null, or cell state is equal to cell state dot dead then return otherwise cell grid y x equals cell that should be better original state is here original state and step 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 that looks good also if you don't mind me saying it looks a little faster than it was looking a little earlier We're still iterating over every cell, but we are no longer doing the boundary check on every wire. This is actually kind of surprising, isn't it? Um, and the GUI is fine. Just gonna quickly look at this in Firefox. Not as fast. Well, not as fast as um, WebKit. But I'm only doing it in Firefox to look at the performance play. Pause. Stop. All of them. Call tree. Update paper is now down to 7% of the total cost. 66% is idle. Although again, that's in um, that's in plain old um, mode. I'm going to quickly reapply the performance measurement, apply, handle the conflict,
that total time can stay. We don't need that. We'll do that. incurring the cost of iterating over all the states and then render and total time is zero. Let's take a look at that diff. So should have the WebKit Web Inspector open. That's only fair. And reset can go away. Okay. And yeah, I'll tear out the performance measurement stuff again. If it becomes too annoying to put it in and tear it out, then I just might leave it in. But reduce the number of times that the advanced method is called from the run function. We are now halfway done. Three thousand Four thousand. This is much faster, isn't it? Qualitatively, I feel like it is. And stop at fifty-one ninety. Window dot perf six. Are you kidding me? Strategy two with boundary check. Uh, with neighbor lists. Is this for real? I know I'm supposed to be like demonstrating that optimization sometimes works in this way. I am honestly surprised by these results. We started the night with a 12 millisecond, uh, what would you call it? Yeah, a 12 millisecond average um, frame compute time. Uh, removing some logic that was performing boundary checks. Sorry, other way around. 12.3, uh, we shaved off a tenth of a millisecond by removing the boundary check, which is not something that can be applied to every wire world instance. But then, 
We turned every cell into an object and tripled the amount of time it took to do the same work. But that data structure allowed us to store a whole bunch of work that we were doing every frame on the cells themselves. And we now have ended up with a 2x speed up, essentially. I'm shocked. I'm very happy to push this to the GitHub Pages site. That's incredible. I feel like I'm missing something. One of the reasons that imposter syndrome is so prevalent in the computer science field is because doubting yourself is a part of the process of estimation and evaluation of the status of the systems you've built, right? And like finding those bugs. And being able to stand by what you've designed. A lot of doubt goes into it. We are at, we are at the 28,000th generation. Just sitting here. This is on the same thread. We have done no kind of, uh, you know, web assembly or web worker optimization. This is incredible. I'm going to look at it in the Firefox flame chart again. A little slower on Firefox, that's okay. But we are going to measure the performance. And stop. Flame chart. Right. We expect this. We're literally cramming um, updates into the uh, animation timer. Right. But holy stromboli. We see no idle time, right? That's fine. The fact that update paper is called and the um, the app updates while it's happening, the fact that we can do this at all, despite running the advance function uh, 30 times a frame. We can, uh, we can definitely do better though, definitely. Okay. I better, get, I better get the total time and that and that out of here. And total time is zero. That gets out of here too. And window perf.
I'm a happy camper. I don't know about you folks, but... It just occurred to me, I have no idea how this looks on the stream. Okay, it looks a little flickery, that's fine. I'll zoom in. Yeah. Very active. Very, very active. Um, did we complete strategy two? Benefit. Iterating over known neighbors rather than okay, saves spatial lookup and boundary check. Final result. 2x speed bump. <laughs> what is even happening? Okay. So Pretty happy with strategy two. Two X is a big deal. Um, strategy three is gonna be interesting. Headcount and generation. We only iterate over No, we do iterate over all cells, but we do a quick check of headcount. rename window perf to something else engine we're gonna call this um, report engine frame time just engine frame time and I'm happy to shove that in prettier. Slight change to engine. What is it? Okay, more than slight, but this looks good. This looks good. Let me actually, I should test that reset does what it's supposed to. Reset. does great. What are these other ones like? These are all, by the way, these are all MCL files that come with Golly. Um, they're not in the repo because um, I don't know. I don't want too much stuff from uh, man, just look at that. Like it's clearly a circuit design of some sort. And to see it work, is that working? <laughs> I think it is. Oh, I'm not resetting the speed properly. Okay. 
just a quick fix to that. Um, let's see. No, you know what? That goes into to do. Bug. Um, loading a new file. Loading a file resets the engine's speed incorrectly. Okay. Yeah, this to-do list is a bit outdated. I think I'll edit that off stream. Okay, well, thanks everyone who is watching for sticking to the sticking to the stream for so long. I went about half an hour over my normal three hour period. Um, yeah, this can go in. Okay. Strategy two. Um, in a nutshell, uh, list cell neighbors ahead of time, use JS objects as structs to store data, simplify iteration. and move away from spatial basis. Something that I'll reiterate on next time, so. Reiterate that X and Y are gone. Well, not gone, are moot. And also, hmm, amend strategy to long m dash. Yep, boom. with episode four. Thanks again, everyone, for sticking with me for so long. Um, I'm really excited to see this degree of uh, performance improvement in a single night. Especially considering we saw performance uh, get worse before it got better. I think it's important to see that, you know, that phenomenon live. Anyway, thanks again. Uh, this is Res Mason signing out. See you next Wednesday. <laughs>